This is the Daily Tech News for Friday, November 28th, 2014. I'm Tom Merritt, and a headlines-only edition today. It's not a holiday per se. Well, I guess it's kind of a holiday here in the United States. Yesterday was the Thanksgiving Day holiday. That's why we didn't have an episode then. Uh, but Friday, the day after Thanksgiving, most people get off as well. Not everybody, especially people in the retail industry, because it's also Black Friday, the biggest retail shopping day of the year, which has gone international. So we're uh, we're taking it easy, just bringing in the headlines, a little bit of an expanded headlines. I wrote a little more than I usually do uh, for these. No discussion topic, no guest, but we'll be back Monday and better than ever. So let's take a look at the headlines. TechCrunch reported on the European Parliament's vote on a resolution to enforce European competition rules against dominant search companies and specifically asked the European Commission to consider separating search engines from other commercial services. Now, you'll notice I didn't mention the name Google, and neither did the Parliament, but we all know who they mean, and this is the one you saw the headlines for that said, European Parliament votes to break up Google. Well, this is a non-enforceable resolution. It's merely meant to nudge the new competition minister, Marguerite Vestager, to look into breaking up Google or not. It's her move now. Black Friday, I mentioned it earlier, it used to be a day where people in the U.S. went shopping after Thanksgiving, and now it's spread elsewhere, including the United Kingdom, who even took up the tradition of having unruly shoppers injuring each other. I don't want to say you're doing it right, but at least you're respecting the traditions, Britain. In a move to keep ahead of the rest of the world, much of the traditional Black Friday dealing here in the U.S. has moved to Thanksgiving Thursday. TechCrunch passes along a report from IBM that online sales were up 14% in the United States compared to Thanksgiving last year. However, the average order value was down from $132 last year to $125.25 this year. So get out your deflation-fighting tools, central bankers, or maybe not. Maybe it's just that as more people shop online, the big spenders that got there first start to get balanced out by newer, thriftier customers. Either way, IBM found some other trends, including mobile devices led by iOS accounted for more than half of all site traffic, and that people shopping on tablets spent more than people shopping on phones. Uber has been notable in defying court orders and insurance commissioners and city governments and everyone else and generally pushing along and getting their way and getting their service into cities. Well, not so in the state of Washington, at least not yet. Washoe County District Court Judge Scott Freeman issued a preliminary injunction prohibiting Uber from operating statewide on Tuesday. And yesterday, Uber posted that they've decided to pull out of the state. However, on their blog, their representative, William, wrote, Uber is in this for the long term, and we are committed to the people of the Silver State, which means Washington. GigaOM reported attackers inserted messages on many sites Thursday, including NBC, The Independent, and NHL.com, among others. Gigya is a service used by all these sites to provide comment management, social logins, things like that. And it turns out that a breach at Gigya's domain registrar allowed attackers to modify the Whois record of Gigya.com to point to a DNS server that had been configured to redirect Gigya's CDN through a server that contained JavaScript that inserted the pop-up with the attacker's message. Uh, so really, it's the registrar that was the vulnerability, and all it did was redirect some traffic. Gigi said no user data was compromised and that the DNS settings have been repaired. Engineering and Technology Magazine reports on new research networks being launched amongst the universities of Birmingham, Oxford, York, and Glasgow in order to facilitate quantum mechanical technology research. Uh, over 100, I should say more than, 130 companies and 17 universities will participate in the Quantum Hub Network. Now, the four main hubs are those universities I mentioned, and each one of them will concentrate on a separate research area. Birmingham is going to concentrate on quantum-based time measurement. Glasgow will focus on quantum cameras. Oxford will research quantum information processing and quantum computing. And York will look into quantum information security, things like quantum key distribution. To support all four hubs, a quantum metrology institute will be established at the UK's National Physical Laboratory in Teddington, focused on development of compact atomic clocks, which all four hubs are going to need in their research. Hey, remember that e-ink watch we mentioned a couple of days ago from Sony? Well, it's real. Uh, it's been hiding out in plain sight. The Verge passes along that thanks to the Wall Street Journal, 
We now know that a startup called Fashion Entertainments has been developing the FES watch, which has e-ink displays on the face and the watch band, and Fashion Entertainments is a subdivision of Sony. Uh, there's no release date yet for the FES watch. However, supporters of the Japanese crowdfunding site Makwake have been told they'll be able to get theirs sometime after May of next year. Reuters reports on the European Data Relay Satellite successfully beaming images to Earth with a laser-based communication technology. The aim of the satellite is to be able to transmit images to the surface at 1.8 gigabits per second without the blind spots. Right now, satellites uh, have to communicate with a base station on the ground, and sometimes they get anywhere from 45 to 90-minute gaps where they don't have the ability to transmit their data down. So EDRS will eliminate that and wants to eventually relay data on sea ice, oil spills, or floods from the Copernicus Earth Observation Project. Uh, that'll help rescue efforts. It'll help clean up efforts because you get the information a lot faster. You'll get it closer to real time. Uh, but its services will also be available to other paying customers who want to use the EDRS couple of pieces of news from you to get to today as well. Uh, thanks for all of those who keep submitting stories on there all the time at dailytechnewsshow.reddit.com. Even over the holidays, you guys are great. Uh, and if you're ever just looking in between episodes for a place to find out a little more of what's happening, you might look there. There's some great comments going on in those threads as well. Digs a lot submitted the Wired story about how the U.S. Department of Justice submitted 44 felony counts of computer fraud and cyber stalking, which amounted to 440 years in prison against an individual named Fidel Salinas, who allegedly had ties to the hacker group Anonymous. Now, that's a lot of counts. Here's what they ended up with. A plea bargain for a misdemeanor count of computer fraud and abuse and $10,000 of restitution. That's a big swing. Most of the charges were flimsy and just did not stand up in court. 18 of the 44 felony counts were for cyber stalking. Those are based on Salinas filling out a form at a website with garbage info and pressing submit 18 times. Gone. Another 15 were results of a vulnerability scanning tool running against sites over the course of a couple minutes. Those got tossed out as well. Most of the other charges were of a similar nature. The only charge that stood was the misdemeanor for scanning the Hidalgo County website and slowing down its performance. It wasn't the scanning was the problem, it was that he slowed down the performance. Selena's sentencing is scheduled for February 2nd. Uh, but Wired makes the point. This is an example of the U.S. Justice Department's strategy, which is to overreach, overcharge, and misunderstand what they're doing in regards to the Computer Fraud and Abuse Act. Philo 1927 pointed out the DSL reports post that AT&T, on the night before Thanksgiving, quietly backed off their threat to pause current deployments of fiber. If you remember, Randall Stevenson had said, wow, we just might have to pause all these deployments. You know, we have 100 cities, and we might just have to pause them if we don't know what net neutrality rules are going to be. Well, AT&T responded to the FCC, which had said, hey, what are you talking about? We need details on this. AT&T said... Oh, no, no. FCC, you misunderstood. We never meant to imply we'd stop current investments of those hundred cities. We meant it. We just weren't sure about future investments of fiber. Uh, so they've clarified they're not stopping current deployments. They're just they're just muddy and uncertain about the future of deployments. Well, since the current investments are rather paltry to begin with, they say 100 cities, but you're talking about wealthy neighborhoods in some of those cities and only small neighborhoods in some of those cities. So they're pretty paltry to begin with. Saying that AT&T might not invest further afterwards actually isn't much of a change from their current practice. And that's a look at the headlines. We've got a uh, pick today. Gil posted this one up on the site yesterday. Uh, he says, my pick of the day is timeanddate.com. It's a great site providing free time and date-related information and services. They have mobile apps, some of which are free and others they charge for. I often find myself needing to book meetings across multiple time zones. Timeanddate.com has a great meeting planner, which helps you figure out the optimal time. Uh, that's great. And an easy one to bookmark, timeanddate.com. Thanks, Gil. Appreciate that. I use uh, an iOS app called Time Scroller which is similar to timeanddate.com. It's a little better at finding, uh, na navigating the different day, par day daylight saving time changes because you can look at particular dates and stuff. Uh, but if you don't have iOS, definitely timeanddate.com is going to help you out. So check that out. Thanks, Gil. Appreciate that. You can find my picks at dailytechnewsshow.com slash picks. A couple things off the calendar and then we're done. A quick episode today. First of all, Razer announced their smart wristband is finally arriving in North America on December 2nd. 
That's next Tuesday. The first 5,000 orders, get it for 80 bucks. After that, it's going to cost you 100 bucks. And The Verge reports Microsoft will hold an event in January, and you're like, well, yeah, duh, it's called CES. Now, this is after CES is over. Uh, Microsoft apparently is going to have a separate event just for themselves to unveil the consumer preview of Windows 10. Microsoft also may detail plans for Windows phones, tablets, dashboard updates for Xbox One. Uh, none of this is official from Microsoft, by the way. This is just The Verge finding out about it, but it sounds like it's pretty credible that we'll be getting a Windows 10 announcement sometime after CES in January. Well, that's it uh, for a quick headlines edition of the Daily Tech News Show. I just want to say that I am, as always, incredibly thankful to you all for your understanding uh, when I take a day off, which uh, which I try not to do very often, uh, when I do one of these headlines shows instead of a regular show, and just for your general support of the show. DailyTechNewsShow.com slash support is the way to find out. Of course, we have 4,000 plus patrons out there helping us to reach goals like getting contributors, getting video, like an official video feed eventually, stuff like that. Uh, and we also have a store if you're like, you know what, I can't support on an ongoing basis. I get the value for value model. I just don't have that much money to give away. But I'm looking for mugs and T-shirts that I could give as gifts because i got to spend money on that. Uh, well, we do have a store that just launched at dailytechnewsshow.com slash store. And if you're wanting a coffee mug or mouse pad or a T-shirt, that's the place to go. And, in fact, right now, as I'm recording this, until Monday night at midnight, you can get 10% off. Uh, the the guy who runs my store for me, David Michael, made that happen. So put in this code, DTNSBF2014. That's DTNSBF for Black Friday 2014. And, and when you check out, you get 10% off. That runs until Monday. Don't forget, folks, you can have a voice in what stories we cover at our subreddit, dailytechnewsshow.reddit.com. You can email us, our email address, feedback at dailytechnewsshow.com. You can give us a call, leave us a voicemail, 512-59-DAILY. That's 512-593-2459. And listen to the show live at mobile.alphageekradio.com. Generally, uh, Monday through Friday at 4.30 p.m. Eastern, 1.30 p.m. Pacific. Our website is dailytechnewsshow.com. Dot com. And, of course, we'll be back on Monday with the regular full show and our guest, Rafe Needleman from Yahoo Tech. Talk to you then. This podcast is part of the Frog Pen Studios Network. For more information about this and other shows, visit frogpants.com. Audio program so good, it's like you're there.